this is super cute with it. With the with the sock on, come on, dude. And you're her type too. And the J. Oh yeah, she loves guys. She has a type. And, uh, your color? And you're her type. Oh. <laughs> I have. I already have a woman. Oh, she's a red one over Tell me that's not adorable. Wait till that one day says welcome to Parrot Station. <laughs> Hello. Oh, he's opening the gate. You want me up? Yeah. yeah. Right. Thanks. I'm Jaime, by the way. Marlene. Pleasure. Megan. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. There she is! Oh my there god. She is. Hello, my fellow sniffers, flighters, and newbies. We are somewhere very special. Jersey's about to be here, hopefully. She's with the late crew. FYI, I'm not the one that makes our crew late. As you can see, I am early. We are at Caesar Milan's. Let's go. That's actually pretty cool. Wait, this is your bird backpack? This is my bird backpack. That's amazing. Yes. This is how we roll here. You can just go right there. Oh my so God. That's how we bird parents do it. Welcome to parenthood. Mm -hmm. Real good, good parent parenthood. I'm actually really proud because I have a backpack for birds. <laughs> no one so has one. The that's um, the bird so whisperer. Uh, there you go. <laughs> You might be the perfect person to fill people in on my channel because people ask me all the time, how does your dog, your cat, your bird, and all your animals get along? And I've been trying to find a good way to put it in words except for I've been thinking, you know, maybe it's best for a dog trainer to answer that because it's really about the way we approach the bird from the dog's point of view because I'm not worried about the dog, but none of our dogs go for our birds, none of our cats. And so maybe you could fill people in on my channel about exactly that because it's a huge question that people ask me and I never want to give out any information without being extremely certain that this is the way. You know what I mean? Because sometimes it's hard to pinpoint exactly what it is that you do that is making everyone get along. I don't train dogs, I train humans. What we need to help a human understand is mother nature has its own law and then it's men law and then it's universe law. So, so we have a tendency to study men law but we have a tendency to disregard Mother Nature law, which is a law with you, without you, and without me. It was already there before we actually yeah. existed. And then you have universe law or God law. And this is where people, like people that watch uh, Tony Robbins, or people that watch Gary B, or people that watch DJ Caleb, you know, all these people say, well, you gotta visualize what you want. But there is laws. So if you, if you wanna tap into that, you have to come with four energies. Calm, confident, love, and joy. So if you don't come with calmness first, you're not going to tap into Mother Nature law or spiritual law. In, in men law, you can come with excitement. In men law, you can come with no honesty, no integrity, no, no loyalty. But when you, when you enter into um, Mother Nature law or a spiritual law, your moral values have to be 100%. So how do you achieve that? Well, how do they do it? So in order for an elephant and a zebra and a, and a horse and a dog and a macaw and every single animal to actually meet in one place, that all of them have to be calm. That is the only way they can close the circle. Which is, uh, my childhood friend just came to visit. He picked up every single one of my birds. I said, how did you know to do that? He goes, because when I was a kid, you told me, always remain calm around the birds. Am I a bird whisperer? I don't know. He always told me, stay calm. Remember? Yeah. When you're younger, you're always like, just stay calm, they will be fine. If you are as calm. As long as you're calm, then you're good. And I was like, huh, like that's what he remembered. And he was able yep. to pick up Vinny and, and Cody and all of the birds. Yeah, she said to Vinny, we're good, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, before he picked them up, he was like, yeah. oh, we're good, right? You want to meet Vinny? Does Vinny want to meet me? 
That's yeah. the question. Vinny, yeah, he's in there you talking. Want to meet me, Vinny? Do you know that Sal's from New Jersey? You know your name's after my cousin Vinny, and Sal lives over there. That's right. Like you did the gangster thing. <laughs> Calm is a superpower. Confidence is a superpower. Love is a superpower. And joy is a right superpower. There. But so most people build relationships backwards, right? So most people do excitement, love, no confidence, no calm. But if you do calm, confident, love, and joy, and then you're building from trust, respect, love, it, and, and, uh, and celebration. So this is happy-go-lucky energy. She knows that's a new smell. This is establishing, you know, uh, the bird that is not used to this kind of excitement. So the bird had the right to let him know this is too excited, but the human has a responsibility to let her know, tone the, tone the excitement down, still meet him, but meet him calmly. So then it's easier for the bird, any bird, to be around new dogs because they're being calm and respectful. Even though she wants to play, they don't see it as a play. They see it, you're too excited and we never met. Yeah. So once you repeat yourself twice, you have to help them to go all the way to zero so they can reset and start from zero to 10. So most people, what they do, go away. So the dog never understood to go all the way to zero. So yeah. when you enter into like a not agreeing with something, if you don't go all the way to calm surrender, you will start exactly how you left. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. so even we humans practice five flight avoidance to each other. But the ideal state of mind to have a long lasting relationship is calm surrender to each other, happy go lucky to each other. And, and, the, and the one who can practice calm confident is the one who is the most stable. Yes. You see what I mean? So male mm -hmm. or female, mm -hmm. because it's not a gender. So leadership is not a gender. Leadership is an energy. You see it? So we're the only species that follow unstable leaders. Only species on the planet that will follow instability. Elephants won't do it, dolphins won't do it, you know, whales won't do it, birds won't do it. We are the only species that follow instability because we value money, fame, and power. They value the most healthy, the most positive, the most loving, the most joyful. Right. That to them, is the only one who can run for president. <laughs> so what I teach people is to understand natural, simple, and profound. Your instincts, your heart, and your spirit. My clients are Harvard graduate, but they can't walk at you out. So even if your intellect has developed and earned and, and make you become Mark Zuckerberg, doesn't mean you know how to connect with an animal. Right. You know what I mean? So Harvard will teach you how to connect to money, fame, and power but doesn't mean it teaches you how to be a good husband, a good father, and a good animal person. Right. So this place, you need a land, you need a, a knowledge, and you need people to help. Surrounding. Yeah, to help move a, an idea. Mm -hmm. Land, you, you must feel safe, peace, and, and love. That's, your home should feel safe, peace, and love. Those are the ingredients of your home. At the moment your home doesn't feel safe, the energy of the human is uncomfortable. You know what I mean? It is yeah. no, no peace. And uh, you can love, that's when you feel safe. You can love people, that's when you trust them. You can love people, that's when you respect them. And that happens a lot in family members. Yeah. That's where you experience that awkward reality. That you love somebody, that's when you trust them. And that could be like your parents. That could be like your aunts. That can be your cousins, you know, like yeah. intimate, intimate pack members. Yeah. You know, because when they're outside your intimate space, you don't really care. You know what I mean? Yeah, you don't it's, care. It's, when they're close to you, it's like... It's when it hurts. Yeah, it hurts the most. My clients unconsciously hurt their, hurt their dogs. Because they don't build on trust and respect. They build on affection. Right. So you can have birds, but if you don't know how to gain the trust and the respect, you don't have a bird. You have the idea of having a bird. It's more of a, of a, a trophy bird. Yeah. Like a trophy wife. Yeah. You can have relationships. Doesn't mean they are. We're already hugging. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even hug you. You already hugged me. Yeah. The, this the, one's you want them? This is a. This I, is I the want to, I want to pet her, but. <laughs> Not, well, you're doing great because okay. you're getting. You're letting them work for your attention. Yeah. I, you know, I I think it's important that they, they, they work for it. You know, 
it's just make a little bit more effort into getting to know you. Is the, is, are you okay with this? Are you not okay with this? So it's very important for them to maintain this social social uh, way of being by you letting them. Be. This guy is the second day, by the way. He's so cute. Yeah. Well, cuteness is this is definitely what they are. <laughs> Every single. I mean, this is super cute with that. <laughs> With the with the sock on, come on. And you're her type too. And the J. Oh yeah, she loves guys. She has a type. Your color? And you're her type. Oh. <laughs> I have. I already have a woman on. She's a red one over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. This this, this guy. Looks like Iluka. It does. This literally. I thought that was Iluka. Iluka. No, I didn't bring Iluka. This is Mr. Santiago. Santiago. Yeah, I like him. What's his favorite thing right here? Love picks and shower. I have a theory, okay? So first of all, like I'll I'll go in the shower with them at night and no matter how they behave with each other, once they get in the shower, it's super calm, you know? They have their space and they're sitting up there. And what happens in the shower is that it kind of mimics that like tropical rainforest vibe. That's actually, it's exactly how they became friends. Yes. Yeah, because she, when, when, when they yes. were on the perch, she was like, ah, get out of here. And then when I bathed them one time, Okay, we there's something miraculous it. about the shower <laughs> and mm. they relax and I always do it at night because at night they're exhausted from the day so mm. they're not gonna put on their hardest like defense right. so they get up there they try something and then they're like oh I, I have yeah. the steam yeah. and then they chill out now what happens after a while is if you put two birds together in a shower they get over themselves they're like yeah. we already spent hours with you yeah. and we didn't bother each other so the next morning when you get up and you put like a plate of food and it's like, hey, this is how you share. Yeah. They they feel like there's nothing to fight for. There's enough food. There's enough, you know, it just it's just two things that like turn on something in their brain. You wanna know which one is for dogs? What? Walking together. See? If they can walk together for a long period of time, that makes them a pack. And then they can eat together. Because I feel like eating together makes them a flock. Yeah. You know what I mean? Family. Yeah, it's a family. It's like you're sitting up in the tree. You see hundreds of like gala cockatoos with sulfur crested cockatoos in Australia. They're all hanging out together. Yeah. There's no reason yeah. why. The only thing that makes it difficult in our house is we've brought in a third component. We've brought in a triangle of jealousy of like, oh, are you the mate? And the way we've raised birds mm -hmm. is that they yeah. don't have you know, we take so much away from them, so they, they, they lose the ability to even kind of want to mate with another bird. They, they kind of like put it in their brain, if you don't do it correctly, to mate with you. Mm. So then you become their mate and then another bird becomes a threat or you become a threat mm. for loving the other bird. So you've created a difficult triangle. So it's very important to establish that like we are all, you know, a flock. It's super important for having many different kinds of birds together. People do that with dogs when they favor a dog. So when they, so people can create a, a division, like what you call it, the triangle. Yeah. Uh, a division of, even with humans, you can create a division if yeah. you favor another sibling. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so in the dog world, it's, it's, uh, if, the, if one dog was there first, people have a tendency to believe that if you pay attention to that dog, he will not feel sad because you brought another member to the pack. You know what I mean? That's why a lot of dog people, when they have two or three dogs, they keep them separate. Mm. You know, so they create like a maximum security because they have created this uh, competition. When you uh, make a predator go into a competitive state, that's when you can go to the Olympics. You know what I mean? The yeah. human is in a competitive state and we redirect that into the Olympics. But before it used to be gladiator thing. Yeah. So, so the human will go all the way to the to the end of being dead. But now it's like, no, you don't have to go that far. So MMA is a perfect example of gladiator thing, but it's a competitive way of being. And that predators are the only one that practice that. Yeah. You know, but so it's easier for predators to go into a fight when you favor one, because then they're gonna claim the human, the food, the furniture, the house, the hall. So you open a door. Yeah. You open a door so they can practice that. Mm -hmm. But if, if you want them to be with different species, you close that door. It's not about competition. Then they say, so how do we get things? And then the human say, well, when you guys are calm, I give you the food. When you guys are calm, I put a leash on you. When you guys are calm, you can go in the pool. Then, then they get excited. So it's not that you're not gonna get excited. It's they're first gonna get, be calm before they practice excitement. 
But most people, when they when they uh, bring a leash, they go, do you want to go for a walk? So now you have two, three dogs in an excited state. And when they see something, they go after each other. Because the human puts the, the tension on the leash. So then that tension goes, ah! and they start fighting this. I can't walk my three dogs. I wonder why. You see what I mean? Yeah. So here, we always reward calm state. And then everybody, ah, that's how you get it. Even with the birds. We never feed excited bird or like panicky or demanding, you know, ah, when, mm -mm. you calm down, you relax. Well, we offer everything. Mm -hmm. Otherwise your neighbors will go crazy. You know what I mean? Because they're going to be calling you that way because that's how they get things. Yeah. But if they've learned to be quiet and then you can have birds and dogs and whatever you want, nobody knows you have them. Yeah, where our neighbors right up next to us and they hear nothing. I've asked my neighbors, I'm like, so do you ever hear the birds? They're like, no. What, what happened?